Hello. So, at the beginning of the week, I brought you a video of my top three favorite types of endings. Well, today I'm going to give you my top three worst kind of endings. Now, just a disclaimer to begin with, this is my own personal thoughts on the subject. I'm not telling you you have to like or dislike my, the same three if they're in a different order for you or you just you really like these that's great that's your opinion and i respect that so then without further ado let's move on to my three worst types of endings number three adverting expectations i kind of touched on this a little bit in my previous one there is a good way to do this, and there is a bad way to do this. I would say 7 times out of 10, this is done badly. It's those 3 times that are the ones that stand out the most. I think my best example for this is probably the end of the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Freddy Krueger is defeated by Nancy, and... It looks like it's over and finally done with. She wakes up the next morning. Her mom is alive. Her friends are alive. And she goes, gets into her friend's car to leave for school. But then Freddy is alive and it turns out it's a dream. And Freddy pulls the mother through the window. It was like they were trying to avert our expectations of what happened. And it kind of made it look like... Freddy was still alive, which made no sense going further into the series. How did Nancy survive? It looked like she was done for at the end. So they averted the expectations of the audience, but they did it in a very bad way, which gave the film a really bad ending. That's the problem when you have an ending that isn't good. Like I said, this kind of ending being... Uh, you know, the averting of expectations, it can be done well. And the ones that are done well, well, they're the ones that get remembered for doing just that. But the ones that don't do it well, they don't get remembered. No one cares to remember it because, well... Now, in the case of Nightmare on Elm Street, it's a film that is remembered, but not because of the ending. It's remembered because everything up until the ending was great. You can literally stop watching the movie right before Nancy wakes up and just goes to the next film. You don't need that ending to make the movie. But moving on to number two. Bland or anticlimactic endings. Now, there are some... Really good movies, really good books that all have really good stories. One of my more favorite movies suffers from exactly this. And for this one, I'm going to use as an example Return of the Jedi. You have Luke and Vader. They're fighting. Luke is about to win, stops, and the Emperor, you know, he's standing over Luke. Then Vader comes along. And tosses them in a hole. Now I've talked about this before on the channel. When I've mentioned you know. Stuff about Star Wars and Palpatine. And you know Darth Maul. Honestly that's a little. Anticlimactic. Luke didn't fight the Emperor. I mean the Emperor was an old man. But I mean still. He didn't fight him. And there are so many other times. Where this is done. And it's like. No, no, that doesn't work. It makes no sense. You can't set up a bad guy, then have him defeated so quickly. Like, you really didn't see the Emperor do much at all in the original series. But he set up like, you know, this is the guy who's got Darth Vader under his control. He's got to be really powerful. And I felt when it came to the Emperor in the original trilogy, that... His character was done bad because of the fact, you know, he got taken out so very quickly. I've recently listened to some audiobooks 
where they set up this main bad guy, and it's over in, like, a few paragraphs. Just, oops, suddenly they're dead. It's like, wait, what? This person's been able to take out all these other people all this time, and you took them down in less than two seconds? I'm not saying the battle has to drag on Dragon Ball style, or Dragon Ball Z for that matter, but, you know, those fights are a little bit more memorable. That tends to happen a lot, I've noticed in anime. Fights get dragged on and on and on and on. Sometimes it's like, can I just skip to the end of the fight? Especially when you have the same villain returning again and again and again and again. Like Naraku from Inuyasha. Those fights, they're not anticlimactic. In fact, they're too climactic, if anything. You know, there is a perfect balance you have to kind of follow when you have an ending. And the setup has to be there. Another way this happens with anticlimactic endings is when you have Deus Machina, or at least that's what some people refer to it as, you know. Just the sudden, unexpected power or event saving a seemingly hopeless situation. I guess the best example of a Deus Machina is the end of Jurassic Park. When the Velociraptors are about to take out the humans, and the T-Rex just shows up and takes out the Velociraptors. Yeah, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I like that. I like the fact that T-Rex is always a very prominent character in the Jurassic Park movies. Its sudden arrival is very, you know, oh wow, okay. Another good example is Superman from 1978. Superman's able to fly around the world to reverse time. Well, if he can do that, you know how many freaking other things he could have fixed? If you have this, yeah, your movie can be great, and people will remember your movie, but your ending is going to get criticized quite heavily. But talking about this leads me into our my number one and most hated unresolved endings. Now, as a disclaimer, before I get into this one, I just want to say having an ongoing series Fine. As long as it's ongoing, you haven't lost me. But, when they say, this is it, this is the last one in this series, if you have unresolved issues, we got problems. Now, off the top of my head, I can't really think of too many movie series that do does this kind of thing. Um, I think the major fault for this would be with TV shows that set up too many plot points and don't get the seasons to finish it off. A good example of Unresolved is there is a TV show called Dead Like Me. Where it got a follow-up movie, but the follow-up movie didn't really end the series. It was kind of like, if I remember it, it was kind of trying to restart the series. You know, kind of like a last-ditch effort to get people to say, yes, we're interested in it. There have been a lot of TV shows. You know, it comes out for a while. There's like two, three, maybe even four seasons. But then the studio just stops and says, no, we're not going to make any more. And instead of maybe trying a final movie, they just leave everything unresolved. This to, is probably the worst to me because of the fact, you know, if you are a fan of that show, you don't get to see how the story ends. If it's marketed the right way, even if it wasn't selling to begin with, you can still market it and you'll get those people back that 
were invested in the first place. I know I talked about this. I think I'm pretty sure I talked about this in a previous video. 24. 24. It left off with Jack Bauer being caught by the Russians. This, to me, is an unresolved ending. Because the show will never be truly over until Jack Bauer is dead. And because of things he did back in Season 8, he was captured at the end of the miniseries, I believe by the Russians. It was either the Russians or the Chinese. And taken to be off to be tortured. Same thing that happened to him last time. Same thing that happened to him time before that. It's like, okay, either kill this guy or let him go be with his family. Let him have a life. You know, it doesn't have to be a good ending, but it has to be a conclusive ending, at least. We have to know something. Taking the main character off screen to say, oh, we caught him. Yeah, you know what? 500 other people have caught him before you. And he keeps managing to get away. Now he's just suddenly going to stay caught? They tried to bring 24 back without Jack Bauer. And it failed. I watched like maybe the first two episodes and I was like, okay, you know what? This is not even that interesting. But it has zero characters from the original. It follows a new protagonist and I'm just, no, I'm not interested. Now, if they wanted to do a proper first season of this new spinoff show, what they should have started with was him, the main character of the new show, going on a mission. And by the end of the first, or at least the end of the second episode, he finds Jack Bauer tied up being tortured. And actually manages to save Jack Bauer. And then Jack Bauer would have had information that was vital to the mission this dude's on. Then, by the end of that season, you could have killed off Jack Bauer, or at the end of the season, let Jack Bauer go and be off with his family. And then we could follow the new character. And if they had done that, that would have probably saved the show. And it would have given them what they wanted, a new main character. So, yeah, unresolved endings. Those are probably my most hated types of endings. Like I said, it does, I don't count that if it's an ongoing movie series or if it's an ongoing TV show or book series or video game series. If you are promising more then deliver it. No matter what you have to do. In the case of Dark Crystal, Netflix said it was too expensive, which is really stupid because most of the expense would have probably came from setting up the show rather than keeping the show going. So that makes no sense. The mo the biggest cost would have been making the props, making the puppets, you know, doing all that. Now they have most of the puppets they already have. They can redesign a couple of them. It's not going to probably be a lot more expensive just to redesign than the ones they have. I'm sure they got a bunch of backups. There's also computer animation, which, you know, for some scenes, it's perfectly fine. The biggest cost is probably the voice actors. Well, that was your fault for hiring big voice actors, or big names for voice actors. But, you know what? I loved that first season of The Dark Crystal on Netflix. I was a little confused how it ties in, how it's going to eventually tie into the actual movie. I was excited for season two. Well, we're not getting a season two because Netflix said it was too expensive and not many people watched. I don't know about that because, you know, Netflix, they don't show those numbers. But yeah, now we'll never get a resolution, really. I mean, I guess you could just say Dark Crystal is a re resolution. But there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't make sense. This has been my three most hated, worst types of endings. If you agree, great. If you don't agree, 
put down your least favorite kind of ending in the comment section below. I'd love to see people actually respond. Be active in the comment section. But I have some announcements before I go. And the first announcement is this. Book 5 is out right now. I highly suggest if you have picked up the previous books to go check it out. I am super, super excited. I really like book three the most, but book five is my close second. I haven't decided about book six yet, but I'll probably do a ranking video once I finish writing the books. Another announcement I have is I'm not sure if anyone here is aware, but I have my own personal YouTube channel. This is the channel I use to talk to other people, to watch videos. I don't use this channel to watch my videos. I use my personal private channel. Um, but I'm giving that up. Kinda. I'm not, it's not just gonna no longer be my own personal private channel. This channel that I'm talking about, I started a very long time ago, probably back when YouTube first started making people have channels. Um, I uploaded some really old uh, anime music videos and some theory ideas for Magic the Gathering, Big Bang Theory, once big I became a fan of Big Bang Theory. Um, but it was just a little channel, just uh, something I started, and now... I'm changing it, kind of. I'm thinking about doing more streaming, especially video games. I w I'm thinking about streaming video games, and I'd love for you guys to be a part of that. If you like watching somebody react to video games, playing video games, uh, or you just want to come over and hang out and get to know me on a personal level while watching me play a video game... Feel free. I don't know how often I'll be streaming. I don't know what time I'll be streaming. It all really depends on my schedule. Um, but I'm going to at least try to do it for a couple hours once a week. At least to start with. I don't know what games I'll be playing. They might be new games. They might be old games. But uh, I'll try to tweet ahead of time. So make sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter. So you can stay up to date with anything going on with me i redid the covers for all my books i just upgraded them a little bit modified the uh title a smidge to make it pop more off the page if you are not subscribed to this channel i hope today you will please consider subscribing and if you do please click that notification bell so you are notified the second a new video goes up I want to thank you all for watching, and I will talk to you next time. I've got tons of videos on this channel, so click over to your right to see a playlist that might interest you. Or click over on the left to see the previous video of this list.